Hey plant fam! Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jacqueline. This is part of my jungle and if you are not new here, thank you for coming back. I appreciate you for still being here. So today I have what I think is a fun one for you and one that might trigger you a little bit. So I'm going to preface this video with this is meant to be fun. This is meant for us to have conversation about these things in the comments and we are supposed to be nice to each other in the comments. If you're not going to be nice to each other, you're going to get blocked. So there's that. So as you can tell from the title of this video, I am talking to you today about 10 unpopular plant opinions that I have and that hopefully maybe some of you share with me. You may very much disagree with me on some of these and that is okay, but hopefully we can have some good conversation about all the things and like have some fun with it in the process. I have my my latte here. I guess this is an appropriate mug for today's topic. You guys don't stress me out, all right? Okay, so the first unpopular plant opinion on my list is going to be that your plants without drainage, your pots with no butt plugs, are fine. They're gonna be fine. So, I know this is like a hot button thing and a lot of you are going to disagree with me and I'm going to say that it depends on the plant. So some plants are not going to be happy in this situation and other plants are going to be completely fine. I'm sure we all have a parent or somebody that we know that's been growing up a plant in a pot with no drainage successfully for like 10 years and you can't seem to understand why. It just works sometimes and other times it doesn't. So I wouldn't recommend it for, you know, a really expensive rare plant or anything like that, but we do actually have a few plants here that are in pots with no drainage and they're fine. Most notably probably the manjula that's usually behind me when I film out in the living room. None of these plants in here are in pots without drainage because they're thirstier plants that get watered pretty often, like calatheas. The lighting is not great, so you can't really see them. So, uh, you yeah, know, we don't do that with those, but cacti, succulents, things that don't need to be watered very often, not that serious. I actually do have this one. My Ripsalis in the skull planter that you guys have seen a bunch because I love it. That one has no drainage. And it's fine because I don't water it that often. And when I do water it, you just kind of let it sit for a little bit. And then once all of the soil is moist, you kind of just take it and dump out the extra. So you just have to be a little bit more mindful about how much water you're giving a plant that's in a pot with no drainage and make sure that it's not sitting in water. Dump it out the same way you would dump out your saucer or your catch pot, all that good stuff. So yeah, pots without drainage, not that big of a controversy. I don't think like, I think that you should just do you boo and if it works, then it works. Number two on my list of unpopular plant opinions is that repotting and fertilizing your plants in the winter is totally fine you should not be subjecting your plants to an environment in which they feel the need to go dormant. Obviously, this is going to be different for different plants. Some are much more sensitive to less light and colder temperatures than other plants, but majority of your plants, they're li they live inside. They live with a humidifier. They live with the heater that I also live with, it heat comes out of the vent. Like it's warm in here and it's humid in here pretty much all year long. So in the winter, I might have to be a little bit more mindful and I run my humidifier a lot more 
but my plants don't know what season it is you guys because the temperature is pretty much the same in here all year long so if you have a plant that is still actively growing there's no reason why you can't repot it and you absolutely should still be fertilizing it i fertilize all my plants in the winter even if they're not growing because they might grow if you give them some food <laughs> so i definitely think that the whole don't repot your plants in winter thing is just silly and you should be more careful obviously with really rare expensive plants if you have a plant in particular that's very finicky maybe leave it alone until springtime but yeah most plants are gonna be fine you guys totally fine <laughs> you guys are gonna be totally triggered by number three and that is that calatheas are actually quite easy they're easy care plants and so are ficus. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to piss everybody off with this one and say that ficus are a lot easier to care for than people think they are. So the thing with plants like this is that they don't like to be dry. So just don't let them get dry. And they're gonna be fine. Like I've forgotten to water this one a couple times and this leaf is looking really sad. It's one of the older leaves. So we are going to be removing it, but um, it's putting out new growth. That's perfectly fine. So <laughs> it's really not that complicated. So there are going to be different types of calatheas and ficus that are a little bit more tricky. But once you figure out their watering needs, um, they're really easy going. You just have to be consistent. They don't like to be dry. If they're dry for more than a day, you're probably gonna start losing some foliage on these. So this is one of my ficus, Benjamina, Eldorados. It's finally starting to get some of its variegation back. I have another one. But this one actually dropped all of its leaves and grew them all back. And it's got like tons of new growth going on in here, even in the middle of winter. So yeah sorry guys prayer plants are not as complicated as people want you to believe they are and uh neither are ficus and i highly recommend trying to sort out your issues with ficus it took me a little while i definitely killed a few but i love them they're so rewarding and they grow into like big trees so i think that's really cool but again this is my personal opinion okay number four is a fun one and that's gonna be uh tap water is fine for your plants i'm sorry i don't mean to offend anybody out there who swears by using distilled water or filtered water on all of their plants and that their plants love it i'm sure your plants do love it but it's just not necessary and i don't like the almost like shaming that some people can do if you're like not taking care of your plants the same way that they do. Like, okay, I live in an area where we have really clean water and there isn't a lot of stuff in the water, so I just water my plants with tap water. If you're living somewhere where there's like a lot of junk in the water and you need to filter it, you do you boo. But I am not buying water like ever I just don't buy water and it's silly you, it comes out of your faucet so I'm not gonna buy distilled water to water my plants with I know that there are certain plants that definitely need it like uh, pitcher plants and stuff like that that are really sensitive to chlorine and things along those lines but people will tell you this about like calatheas and stuff all the time that the reason why it's browning your leaves are browning because you need to use distilled water and I, I looked into it I was doing some research on it and it turns out that that's not really a thing so argue with me if you want to argue with me about it if you have any research like legit scientific research that you want to cite in the comments I would love to read it because everything that I see online says that basically it doesn't matter it is such like a minuscule thing that it should not have an effect on your plants 
and I water literally every single plant in my collection with tap water and um, they're fine. So don't go crazy, you guys, over the whole. Don't make people make you feel bad, essentially, is what I'm getting at with this one. If that works for you, I know a lot of people love doing rainwater. If you have the ability to be able to collect it, awesome. But it's the shading for me. It's the way that it makes other people feel like as if they're doing something wrong. If they're not watering their plants with like fancy water. Okay, so I'm just saying, girl, it's okay. You keep on watering your plants with that tap water and they're gonna be fine. <sighs> Number five is one that I have addressed in a video previously. Is that a fungus now? I didn't get it. Um, <laughs> and that is that low light plants don't exist because they don't. You can say all day long that like, oh, this plant will tolerate low light, but you cannot ever claim that a plant is going to thrive in low light. It's not possible. Plants photosynthesize and you need sunlight or artificial grow lights that mimic sunlight in order for them to do that. So I, again, I've done a whole entire video debunking this myth. It is not a thing. Please stop calling them low light plants. Your pothos will thrive in bright and direct light, please. So will your snake plant. You can even put that chick right out into the bright light and it's gonna be totally fine. It's gonna grow like crazy for you. So low light plants don't exist. It's not a thing. It's just not. Ooh, number six. <laughs> you guys, number six is one that people get so mad about on the regular, on the internet. And I cannot for the life of me understand why. And I'm gonna tell you right now that throwing out your plants is completely normal and it's completely fine. Don't let anybody make you feel like you're doing something wrong by throwing out a plant that you purchased with your own money. The last time I checked, when I buy something, something that's inanimate, it's mine. I own it. And if I want to take it home and light it on fire, that's really none of your business. Now is it? So the whole like, oh, you could have given it away or, oh, you could have, you know, somebody would have taken it. No, I don't want to have to deal with that because it's going to sit on my table again now for another two weeks until I find somebody who's going to take the stupid plant and I don't want the plant. It's dying. I'm going to throw it away. Because why would I give a plant to somebody when I know that the plant looks like crap? <laughs> like, I just, girl throw away the plant, just throw it out. If you don't have anywhere that you can take it or give it to somebody, honestly, I've taken some of my plants I didn't want anymore, like to local nurseries and stuff and been like, hey, you guys, can, you can have these, uh, do whatever you want with them, I don't care. But um, yeah, I'm. It's, it's the shaming for me, again, on this one. It's completely fine for you to throw out a plant if you bought it with your own money even if it was a gift, who cares? Like you can throw it away if you want to, it's yours. So the people who wanna come at me on the internet for throwing out a plant, I hope you hold that same energy every time you find a bug in your house. Just saying. It's all like, oh, it's precious, it's a living thing. Okay, just hold that same energy for all of the living things that enter your home. Number seven is a, is a very personal opinion, and that is that um, Tradescantia, they're ugly. I'm sorry, Grandma. They're just, they're ugly. They're really not good looking plants, unless you can grow them outside, like on your porch or something. I don't mind them. But um, for an indoor plant, they just don't do well. They grow really leggy. They look kind of like icky. I don't know how to explain it. Like I look at them and I feel like there's going to be bugs on it. And I don't know why. Certain plants just like give me that vibe. And Tradescantia is one of them. I'm not going to linger on this one because it is, it's a deeply personal opinion. I just don't find them attractive. 
I should have just put this as croton are ugly, but we all agree on that one. So it's not an unpopular plant opinion. So many people love Tradescantia and that's fine. Um, I just need you to understand that it's ugly. <laughs> Number eight, you guys. Another one I'm going to get attacked for in the comment section. Misting your plants doesn't do anything. I, it does things. It makes your leaves wet, which is actually not good for like fungal and bacterial stuff that can happen from your leaves sitting there being wet. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of studies conducted on this. It does not increase the humidity maybe for like 30 seconds around the plant. It's like, hey, more moisture in the air. But like you'd, you'd have to stand there all day. <laughs> like you'd just get a humidifier if like you need more humidity in your space. Um, pebble trays like kind of work a little bit more than misting will, but misting doesn't do anything. If anything, it's just going to create more problems for you potentially than it is going to help your plant at all. The only time I advocate for misting your leaves is when you've got like a stupid stuck philodendron leaf that won't come out um, or Bird of Paradise is really uh, well known for having their leaves get stuck if it's not humid enough because you guys these are tropical plants They live in a more moist environment. We bring them into our homes that tend to be a little bit more dry So the only time I missed any of my plants is When my philodendron has a new leaf unfurling off on that leaf um, When I remember I try to once a day help Put a little bit of moisture on there but um that is why i say that you should keep your philodendrons in a more humid environment because their leaves just they love to like get stuck in the sheath like the tip won't come out and it just keeps trying to unfurl anyway so it does this thing i know you know what i'm talking about if you've seen it you know what i'm talking about you know exactly what this means <laughs> you've seen it before so yeah, misting your plants is not going to help increase the humidity for that plant. Okay, number nine is probably, uh, probably gonna be the one that pisses you off the most and I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Death plugs don't actually kill your plants. So I've got a couple of aglionemas back here that are in quote unquote death plugs and they thrive. They love life. They're growing like crazy. Um, I think that there's a lot of misconceptions around growing plants in plugs and it can create a problem. Sure, if you're trying to like get it off of the roots and I know they make like the plastic ones too that can be a real pain in the butt to get off of the roots of the plant, but um, the roots are gonna grow around and through the plug. And usually like those fabric ones dissolve over time anyway. So calling them death plugs feels really dramatic <laughs> because a plant being in a plug does not automatically equal death. So there are going to be circumstances, sure, where it's not doing any good for the plant and it is in your best interest and in the plant's best interest to take it out. But um, yeah, it's not like that. It's not like this big dramatic thing that people make it seem to be. Do I love it? No, I don't think anybody does. But you do have to understand the mentality of growers and why they grow in plugs because it is just a whole hell of a lot easier and you just plop it in a bigger pot with some dirt and I'm pretty sure that they wouldn't do that if they thought that they were all gonna die that wouldn't be very good for business now would it so death plugs can we just agree is a little bit dramatic like disagree with me if you want to but it is it's pretty dramatic um, your plant being in a plug doesn't automatically equal your plant dying so <sighs> be mad at me go ahead yell at me in the comments it's fine. okay so number 10 um, is another quite <laughs> controversial topic and um, 
that's gonna be this whole tissue culture plants aren't real plants thing and I've just got to let you know that that's a whole pile of garbage it's trash it's not true tissue culture plants are most of the time 99% of the time I'm making up this statistic if not more than that they are completely like the differences between a tissue cultured plant and a propagated plant you wouldn't be able to see because they're the same plant so there's a lot of argument around um like genetic weakness which is not at all the case and i do want to point out that majority of the plants that are on the market right now especially like rare plants or like less common plants or expensive plants that are just starting to become more readily available they're all tissue culture like most of them and they're fine <laughs> like there are definitely things that can happen but i just want to stress to you that just because a plant is a TC or a tissue cultured plant does not mean that that plant is going to be weaker or that it's not like a true whatever. Like it's not a true spirit of sancti because it's tissue culture. Like it's, it's literally the same thing. You're taking the cells of the plant and you're using those cells to grow another plant. It's like cloning essentially, but there is a lot more genetic diversity and tissue culture than people realize. So I would love to learn even more about it. There's a lot of nuance and a lot that goes into the science of it that I don't know and I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I do, but I do think that tissue culture plants get a bad rap for no reason when they're literally indistinguishable from quote unquote real plants because like it, it's a real plant it's a it's tangible feel it and hold it and see it and pet its leaves so most of the plants that you're buying on the market right now are tissue culture and um they're fine right so let me know in the comments below how you feel about these things obviously I know you guys aren't going to hold back. I'm <laughs> anticipating a lot of pushback on some of these things, but that is the fun of having these conversations. I wouldn't sit down and make this video if I wasn't anticipating people disagreeing with me, and I want you to. I want to have these conversations with you. I want to know why you might disagree with some of these things, um, except for like Tritoscantia being ugly. That's that's a me thing, but I know a lot of you agree. It's not just me. So that is it for this video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you had fun hanging out with me today. You should absolutely consider giving this video a thumbs up. I mean, you watched the whole thing. You obviously liked it, so you should give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything from me. If you are new here and you have watched a few videos and you're not subscribed yet, what are you doing? Help a sister out. Hit that subscribe button. It definitely does help the algorithm. It lets them know, lets the YouTube gods know that um, people like what I'm doing so that they could show it to more people. And um, there's a join button if you guys want to be part of the official plant fam i am trying to come up with like some new ideas and like perks that i can bring you guys this year so definitely let me know in the comments below what you would be interested in seeing as a perk for your plant fam membership um don't be afraid to hit the join button and check out what your options are it's not going to automatically enroll you in anything but you can click on it and see what you would get as a plant fam member i'm gonna shush there is a super thanks button as well if you want to super thanks me donate a little bit to my channel everything helps i literally cannot do this without you guys i love you so so much even though we have different plant opinions that's okay i still love you and i genuinely hope that i see you in the next one <laughs>